Look, I'm a huge fan of the GoPro Hero 7 Black. There's no point in me denying it, but it's an expensive niche kind of camera that you may not want to invest in today. So let's find out if you really need to spend that kind of money or could you still save some dough and get a quality action camera for one seventh of the price? The GoPro Hero 7 Black versus the Yeelight. My two favorite action cameras go head to head. <sighs> What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. These are, without a doubt, my two favorite ends of the action camera spectrum. On the one side, we have the $60 Yeelight, which continues to be my recommendation for the best budget action camera you can get. And again, it's not a secret that I think the GoPro Hero 7 Black is the best action camera ever made, but you have to pay for that awesomeness. It's not cheap. Awesomeness doesn't come cheap. Let's find out though if we can save some money on the way. Just because we want a good action camera doesn't mean we need to spend that much. What I try to do here is figure out the no kidding things that you need to know about cameras, you know, action or otherwise, and save us all the time of waiting through a hyper specific review video if that's your thing and you want that that's totally cool and there are lots of other videos out there about that after it's boiled down we're left with the five most important aspects of an action camera if i'm going to recommend it to somebody and those are called you guys ready the pillars of action 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 first up decent not perfect image quality now i do differentiate what i expect from a tiny censored camera from what i expect from a larger censored like interchangeable camera like these like these two guys however that doesn't mean it can have bad quality i do have a level of quality that i expect so on a quick spec note i said spec and not technical because the gopro doesn't gopro doesn't release what the internal specs of the gopro hero 7 line are so we're gonna do features. The biggest difference between the two is the GoPro can do legitimate 4K and the Yeelight cannot. The GoPro Hero 7 Black can do 4K stabilized, more on this later, up to 60 frames per second and 1080p unstabilized up to 240 frames per second. The Yeelight can do 1080p and up to 60 frames per second stabilized. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty big gap. And I'll continue to mention this as we go along, but again, you can get seven Yeelights for one Hero 7 Black. So just, I mean, remember that in the back of your noodle. But how does the image quality between both look? Well, in this video, just to even it out a bit, we did set the GoPro to record in 1080p, but I still think the image quality does look better coming out of the GoPro. I mean, you, like I said, you pay for awesomeness. That's not to say that both aren't good, because for the price, I'm still impressed and surprised by the quality of the Yi Light. Like, it's it's my budget camera recommendation for a reason. One thing that I do wish the Yi had is in 2.7K and 1080p, the GoPro can record in its linear mode, and that reduces most of that fisheye distortion that the Yi has. And this, unfortunately, doesn't have it. It's got, like, fisheye distortion pretty, pretty bad. You can turn on distortion reduction, which helps, but nothing really fixes it as well as the solution GoPro can came up with it's pretty darn good but don't take my word for it let's hop outside for a quick video slash vlogging test <laughs> welcome to the vlogging test of the gopro hero 7 black and the yi light both the cheapest action camera i recommend and the most expensive action camera i recommend so to the test record record vlogging test begin whoa Okay, so this is the vlogging test of the Yi Light and the GoPro Hero 7 Black. It is crazy bright out here right now. I don't know if you could tell that. Uh, so they're both set to 1080p to make it, you know, fair ish to the Yi Light. Plus, the GoPro cannot do its linear mode in 4K. It can only do that in up to 2.7K. So we're shooting 1080p, 30 frames per second for both cameras. Uh, just because I think the linear mode on the GoPro is best when it comes to vlogging or when you're filming yourself because it takes that fisheye distortion away. The e light you can't do that. So it's it's a 1080p 30. The GoPro is also it should be roughly equivalent uh, field of view. But yeah, this is the this is the vlogging test. So this is the audio coming out of the Yi light. Audio test one two three. Audio test one two three. And this is the audio coming out of the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. Let's see if we can get in some shade. Make it a little better. I'm in shadows, you got light behind you, so you can kind of see how the two cameras deal that. Uh, yeah, let's let's do some, uh, let's get some backlit. Let's have the sun right straight up in your face. How are the cameras looking there? Oh, they're looking pretty good. 
Now I will say they both have their electronic image stabilization turned on. There is no contest. The GoPro Hero 7 Black has the best image stabilization I've ever seen. Like it's the best in the market. I haven't even, I don't even know where my gimbal's at right now uh, cause I haven't used it since getting the GoPro Hero 7 Black. So uh, you will be able to see a little bit of a difference with stabilization. I haven't seen this footage yet as we record this. So maybe, you know, it's not that bad and it's not necessarily worth the seven times additional asking price of the GoPro versus the Yi. But this has been the vlogging test back inside cause it's actually kind of cold outside. <laughs> okay, and this is the indoor slash studio test of the two cameras. So this is the image quality and the audio coming out of the Yi Lite. And this is the image quality and audio coming out of the GoPro Hero 7 Black. So this is the exact same setup that you just saw a few moments ago on the main camera, but you know, on the action camera. So uh, this is what you can expect to get indoors. I mean, a lot of times you're not gonna use these kind of cameras indoors, uh, but we are set up pretty low light right now. So this is, I guess if you wanted to use these as an indoor studio camera, this is what you would get. I will say, I am very impressed at how the GoPro Hero 7 works in low light. Uh, a lot of these cameras just aren't set up to handle low light situations. So the fact that it can look any way near reasonable at all is pretty impressive. I haven't done this test in a long time on the Yi Lite. So this is the image quality between the two. If you wanted to use it as a studio camera, back to the video. <laughs> We changed, we changed search really quick. Lots of stuff about image quality and while image quality is important for me personally, the most important aspect of any camera, but doubly so when I'm out doing more exciting things than walking around my backyard talking to myself is ease of use. Seriously, have you ever found yourself out on a mountain bike and you like, you didn't want to mess or change the settings or wade through a crappy menu system? That's why ease of use is important, especially if you're clipped in. You don't want to fall off your bike. I've fallen off my bike messing with stuff. It's embarrassing. You, I mean, you just want to get back to riding. So having an easy to use user interface is seriously important. And something that both of these cameras do really right is their menu systems. Both have a two inch touchscreen on the back, but not only that, both have very simple and easy to use menu systems on the back. Like I cannot overstate how important that is. Switching menus between the two is a really quick and painless process. This is rare that I think someone else does this as good as GoPro. So good on you, Yi. Uh, for being able to achieve that level of quality. The most important defining aspect of an action camera lies in the action moniker. Sure, my cell phone has decent image quality and re relatively good stabilization, but I'm not gonna put it in a gimbal and take it out mountain bike riding with me. Durability is what separates the action cameras from the not action cameras. Classic. <laughs> Here's gonna be the biggest difference between the two. You can lower expectations for both video and again, they're a neck and neck for ease of use but no one, no one on this planet can touch a GoPro body for durability. Straight by itself, it's waterproof down to 10 meters and it has a replaceable lens cover and it can take a hit. Look at this video, ding, of me destroying a GoPro to see just how darn durable this body is. I mean, it's the perfect housing for an action camera. The Yi Light is not. It's made of pretty cheap feeling plastic and it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence for me when I consider the other options out there, like GoPro. It does have a base amount of ruggedness where all of the ports are covered and there is a waterproof case that you can get, but then you lose your audio recording capabilities and you lose the ability to put it in a gimbal, which is pretty important. I might actually take this category out in the future when we compare against GoPros and just replace it with a funny sound effect. Like, wah, wah, you're not a GoPro. But you've got the camera and now you wanna get some better footage. So how compatible is it with GoPro style mounts and accessories as GoPro still continues to dominate, like dominate the action game? Like ease of use, this isn't as far apart as you'd think. Both are actually pretty darn close with their shared body shape and rough size. You can use either in third party gimbals, mounting adapters, all sorts of additions. To the GoPro's benefit, you can use their first party gimbal and to the Yi's benefit, even more so important to me, it has a quarter inch tripod mount on the bottom. So I will call this another draw since I'd prefer the quarter inch tripod mount to the using the GoPro Karma. I think we can all agree to that. But um, tsh. <laughs> I get silly when I have the second camera. But last and certainly not least, because the future of action cameras is a future in which gimbals are no longer needed. The future. So how does the built-in stabilization on both cameras work? Much like durability, this isn't gonna be fair. Nothing else in the market, nothing else in the market comes close to the GoPro Hero 7 when it comes to stability. Even the optical image stabilization on the FTRX 3000, 
I'm sorry, the GoPro Hero 7 trumps that too. And since buying this, my gimbal leads a very sad, lonely life on this shelf back here. I mean, I never even, I never bring it with me anymore. The stabilization on the Yi is fine, and honestly, for a $60 camera, it's incredible, with an exclamation mark, that it even has EIS. But it's not the greatest. The fisheye distortion of the camera that we already talked about is made worse when you have the stabilization turned on, leading me to rarely use it. So both have electronic image stabilization, but that, but it's not necessarily created equally. Like stabilization, it's different. And to be frank, I wouldn't want to have to come up with something to counter the GoPro system because it's just, it's incredible. Like it is, I can run. I can run using the GoPro handheld and the footage is smoothed out. I mean, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy good. But in the end, we have to find something out so what, right? So can you save some money or should you just save up and get the GoPro because everything else is a waste of time, right? Am I right, other camera nerd? Honestly, I think the Yeelight brings a lot of value to the table. It used to be an over $120 camera a couple of years ago, but with all the price reductions, today it's at a very respectable $60. And it's got value for days at $60. It has a perfectly fine 1080p image, and I will continue to recommend this as the best budget action camera I've ever come across. But if you wanna step up to 4K or have better slow motion or even a more rugged body, I also absolutely recommend the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Legitimately, it's the best action camera ever made. It just, it ticks every single box in the pillars of action so hard, it's like it was designed in a secret lab to specifically answer everything that I'm always like, this is what action cameras need to do. It's like, it's like a scheme that they've, they've figured me out. Both are great, and this is a happy video where I can give you two separate options for two different budgets. Hooray, it's like the perfect video, right? Thumbs up, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. Thanks for watching.